So we have an exercise for remembering God, the Lord. And we ask you to read passages which bring to mind both the work and person of God. And again, you have this in your handout. Uh, and you have it another time with the verses in the back of your notes. And you have this in a simple form that you might take it, put it in your Bible, and have it with you anywhere. But this is the portion of the Sabbath experience where, where you remember God. Look at those passages again and again that call to mind what God has done, his creation and his salvation. Record your thoughts. One young lady, she was a pastor's wife, she wrote a poem, a beautiful poem on her Sabbath. She began to write and she wrote about her relationship with God and how beautiful it is to spend time with him in solitude. And she shared that. We've had others sit down and one person, an elderly man, watched a squirrel gather its nuts and watched that squirrel for some time. And he just found such pleasure in a little creation of God. Once, and I tell about it in my book, uh, I was on a very warm day in the state of Kansas. It was summertime, and I was sitting in a picnic pavilion. And I sat there on a picnic bench, and I saw this spider web. Now, at home, I would see a spider web, and I'd take a broom and get it out of there. But I didn't care since I didn't own this property and I didn't have a broom with me. So I began to look at the spider web. And I thought for a moment like an engineer or an architect. How did the spider do this wonderful web? Where does he begin? And of course I knew that it must begin with taking a string that it produces. And that's another thing. What kind of substance is that that it can make and it's tough, but stretchy, and he can make, he builds his own home without nails, screws, or lumber. And he takes one strand here and another strand here, and he has these things. Then he goes around and around, and I noticed how even the concentric circles were, just around and round and round and round. And then I realized he's just made his home or her home, and also made the restaurant because then a fly or a mosquito gets caught into it and there's food for the taking. Now, what a marvelous thing. Where did this person go to school? Oh, it's not a person, it's only a spider. Where did this spider go to school to learn that? What school of design and architecture did it go to? My goodness, wow. What is it about? And I thought, well, where its brain must be very large. But in fact, its brain is so tiny, it barely would fit on the end of a pin. And where does it get in its intelligence? Well, I figured it must have some intelligence that is instinctive, instinctive. He didn't have to go to school. He or she didn't have to read or study books and how to do this. And you know, there must be a pretty big God outside of this little spider. All this intelligence must come from another place and given into that tiny little being and it knows what to do. And it knows how to build and it knows how to eat from the restaurant. I thought, wow, what a what a good lesson. You know, I thought I was pretty important, but I can't do that. I can't form that substance. I can't build a web like that. And how does it know without getting away and, and looking at a distance if all these things are round and perfect? This is an amazing thing. My God and my Creator, aren't you awesome? Well, sorry I got carried away there, but. Uh, you, you get the idea. Remember. By the way, you might want to 
write words like a poem or just write a few phrases. It doesn't have to be poetic and special. Or you may want to sing a song. Perhaps you've written a song. Perhaps you have a song book, a hymnal. Or you might write out your prayers. But all of this is because you're remembering God. Or you may just shout, don't be inhibited. Let him know how you feel. What brings to mind the memories? What expressions of emotions and celebrations do you have after remembering his creation and remembering his awesome works as the Redeemer God? And go and do that activity which expresses your appreciation for God. And someone has said and, and, and said it well, I think, love God and do what you want. That sounds a little risky, perhaps. But I believe it's true. Love, love God. When you love God, what does it say in Psalm 37? Delight thyself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. If you get so close to God that you delight in him, it's unlikely that at that moment or even on that day that you'll do some horrible sin. It's possible. But if you delight in God, he will change your desires so that you delight in him and do that which pleases him as the happiest moments of your life. Do that activity which expresses your appreciation for God. I love to go for nature walks. I love to sing along the way sometimes as long as no one is listening. I love other things. I enjoy music, listening to music. There are a number of ways to celebrate as you remember God. It's so significant. It's so refreshing. And reserve if you're spending three hours, one hour, but we won't be uh, rigid about that. We won't be forceful about that in any sense of the word. Now let me just say that we're surrounded by a lot of bad news. As I've already pointed out, there was a horrific earthquake in Japan. There's a death toll that is high because of tornadoes in uh, the country or the states near where we live and south of us. And uh, certainly there's all kinds of tragedies, fighting rages for control of Libya cities. Um, teenage suicide around the world is becoming greater and greater, and especially in the United States, sad as it is. So is there any good news? Yes, there's good news in all this. We have a beautiful Savior. He is something, someone perfect. And all this bad news that may surround us in countries and in cities, in the midst of it all, there is always the beautiful Jesus Christ who we can look at and read in the Bible and see how he acted among children and see how he treated widows and those who were destitute, those who were ill, those who were blind, and so forth. I want to use an illustration about someone who is a diamond collector someone who cared for stones, a jeweler. I noticed that you have jewelry in your country just as we do in ours. And around the world, one of the most precious of stones is the diamond. Well, this one jeweler had quite a group of uh, diamonds, a collection of diamonds that was his for a long time, some of which had been handed down to him and they were precious stones, and he looked at them again and again. But he found none of these precious diamonds, costly as they were, to be perfect. And he kept his eye out as he looked at various stones day in and day out and went to special places to see new stones, and he would trade so he'd have the finest collection of diamonds he could have. But one day he came across a diamond that was so beautiful, so amazing, he looked at it and he studied it and he couldn't find one speck of darkness in it. He couldn't find one flaw in it at all. There were no shadows or clouds in it. And he examined it for quite a while. Finally, he decided to take his whole collection of diamonds and trade it and buy this one magnificent stone. He took it and of course he kept it in a very safe place in his jewelry store, in a safe where no one knew what it, where it was. And once a week he found that he found, he took great pleasure in taking out this one beautiful diamond like none others, other he had ever seen. 
And he took it out and he put it under a strong light. He closed all the doors, the shadow, the shades and everything else. And there he was. And he took it and he twirled it under the light using a magnifying glass, microscope. And he found such pleasure in the perfect. He couldn't forget it. And he would put it away. And while he worked with customers that weren't always easy to work with, while he worked with those who perhaps uh, could be difficult and they expected a higher appraisal price on their stones that, than they were worth, he remembered the perfect. And the perfect helped him see the flaws in other diamonds. This too is valuable for his trade. Well, we have the perfect before us. Not a diamond, not something of material, but a person, our creator, the Lord Jesus Christ. We have him and we can take him out. Take your Sabbath time and look at your savior. Read the Bible, read the gospels and see what a beautiful person he was. Read about the love of God Almighty in his word. See it again and again, how he treats people how he cares for them. Ponder, imagine yourself to be the person of need that meets him. He's someone beautiful. We can withstand the hard things we hear that take place in our communities, on our globe. We can withstand, we can, we can handle those hard things if we have the perfect to look at and remember that we'll be going to meet him and not to depart from him. Forever and ever we will be with him. And that will help us survive and thrive these days no matter what is ordered for us. No matter what may occur in our lives, in our communities, in our families. Whether life is short or long. Whether we have brightness to view or dingy colors all around us. Look at him. Take your time to go through the photo album. To remember your creator your Savior, your Jesus. So I ask, when in this coming week are you going to take out Jesus, your Savior, Jesus, the perfect provider forever? When? End of session. We strive to serve the contemporary Christian community with a variety of Christian educational and evangelistic resources. To see TVS Seminary's database, please visit tvsseminary.com.